So, so he does not have legal control over the land that he asserts control over. Does the BLM? Where is that in the Constitution? The federal government owns. This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them. Uh, what can yep. you, what can you promise me yep. that you will do, uh, if elected senator, to help uh, ease tensions at the Bundy Ranch? That's a good question. Uh, I've actually spent a bit of time last night uh, studying that. From from what I've learned so far, and I don't claim to be an expert, uh, Mr. Bundy has does not have uh, control over that land, and the issue in Nevada. So so he does not have legal control over the land that he asserts control over. Does the BLM? Where is that in the Constitution? The federal government owns 87 percent of the land in Nevada. Now this is a big problem because people in, and this is where federalism comes in, we, we, where your, your, your first question about the extent to which New Hampshire should be allowed to do things differently than, for example, California or New York. You know, we're, we're a somewhat rural state. Nevada is a rural state. And, and values in, in states like New Hampshire and Nevada are different than they are in states like New York and California, where there, there, are, there are a lot of votes in, in Congress. So that's why we have federalism. It's why the states, the Constitution reserves to the states and to the people, respectively, the right to do things not granted to the Constitution, powers not granted by the Constitution to the federal government. So we have, we have abrogated federalism. And I think we, 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 we deal with this issue out there in Nevada at the Bundy Ranch if we had more federalism and the BLM did not control the lion's share of the land in Nevada, the, the BLM, uh, in, in, in an agency of the federal government. So of, I believe the yeah. resolution there comes in more federalism. Let Nevada deal with these kind of issues. And if Nevada wants to protect the turtle, the turtle that apparently eats cow manure to survive, then so be it. Let Nevada deal with an issue like that. Well, I <laughs> mean, the you, values you, in Nevada are different. Yeah, you've there. articulated yeah. a position and I yeah. appreciate that, but I'm yeah. asking what you'll do. I would, I would seek to restore federalism. Uh, How? So, well, some of the land and property owned by the federal government, a great deal of it is not needed by the federal government. It contravenes the Constitution. It should be granted back to the states or sold into the private sector to reduce budget deficits. I mean, we can, we're not going to, in one fell swoop, restore uh, you know, a perfect uh, constitutional adherence in Congress, but we can begin to make steps by, for example, uh, the federal government liquidating or granting lands back to other entities, the state and local entities that it now owns, that it doesn't need for any purpose. There I know purposes. James Watt tried, yeah. but really yeah. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> these are, these are, the Republican Party is as guilty of some of these things as the Democratic Party is. Our debt, our, our country is 17 plus trillion dollars in debt right now. So why be in this country? Why can't because, we have a country of our own? Well, because we are the greatest country in the world. We, we, we are yes, New Hampshire is. <laughs> New Hampshire, yes, yes, New Hampshire. New Hampshire is a good model. We have a great legislature here. We may disagree with it sometimes, but it's, it's, it's a legislature of the people. Uh, there are 400 members of that wonderful house. I served in the state senate. I know, I know how wonderful it is. And Washington could, could, could look at what we do, the way we do things here in New Hampshire. Our, our, legislatures, our legislators are connected to the people responsive to the people. We have elections every two years. Yeah. Uh, people typically are not in these offices for political careerism. They don't get rich by being there. And Washington is just, as I say, it's, it's corrupt to the bone. Half of U.S. senators, when they leave office, become lobbyists. And they earn a million to three million bucks a year doing so. So their, their motivations, the motivation of, of half of U.S. senators is, is tilted away from representing the people representing the people that, that own and operate and, and, and to whom they should be solely accountable. All right, yeah. Mr. Rubens, I appreciate your time. Or is it Dr. Rubens for all I know? It is Mr. Rubens. Okay. Senator much, Rubens. Much, yeah, we'll see. I won't promote you yet. But, well, uh, I'm a former state senator, so I get to... Oh, that's right, yeah. You were in the <laughs> so, state senate. Okay. Yeah, I was in the state senate. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Much appreciate your time, and we'll Thank see you. what happens out there. Like you. Thank you. Your tax dollars at work right here. Tax dollars paying for what is that? How much does a four wheeler like that cost? About 15 grand. Each one? Oh, no, no. No, can't do that. Federal agents on the streets of Keene, New Hampshire. They're investigating reports of an unlicensed radio station said to be broadcasting LRN.FM.
So why all the fuss? What is LRN.FM? Well, it's probably not something these agents want you to listen to. It's a 24-hour news talk broadcast, all pro-liberty. A true authoritarian free zone. Tune in at LRN.FM to listen or broadcast their signal. LRN.FM Feds don't want you to hear them.